Hi, everybody. Welcome to Conversations with Calvin, We the Species. And officially, this is my 201st interview. So that means something in the two years plus that I've been doing this. And 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 I guess uh, uh, you know the it's the perfect alignment of the stars and the sun and the moon uh, because I'm with Iris Nevins who uh, absolutely fascinates me with the work she does and the commonality and and, and we're going to talk about that uh, chronologically uh, we are in the twelfth day of January in this new year and and Iris uh, and and I kind of met uh, in this wonderful place social media and and when I looked. At, at at her body of work, it's like oh wow. Uh, 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 let me read the title. Uh, I, I like to do that so that people can kind of digest. Um, what a life, too. By the way, they could do a uh, they could do a thing to your life, Iris. Uh, what you've accomplished? No, really, you know, really, what you've accomplished. Uh, it's like wow. Uh, so many different things. Uh, Iris Nevin, CEO, Umba Daima which empowers diverse people uh, and it helps to close the digital divide, which is what the world really needs, tremendously so. She's an educator, community builder, uh, uh, also software engineering manager. Uh, and um, this interview in some shape or form comes live from Georgia. And, and I uh, really uh, am so thrilled that you're here and we're gonna do this thing. Because again, your work uh, is so fascinating. I spent a bunch of time on uh, umadayma.com, uh, watching a whole bunch of different things. Uh, uh, so I'm thrilled, and I, I can't thank you enough for being here, uh, Iris. And, and and how about a little bit of a, um, a little background, a little bio, and then we'll jump into some of your work. Sure. Thank you so much for having me, Calvin. I'm honored to be here. And, um, you know, I, I, I love, I love the fact that you want to talk about my whole story. I don't always get to talk about that. So I'm looking forward to it. Great. Um, yeah, so I'll start with my childhood. I was born in Miami, Florida to Jamaican parents. They were Jamaican immigrants, uh, that came here in the eighties for college and they had my brother and I um, in their like early to mid twenties. And so we, you know, we grew up, I would say pretty, pretty modest, uh, pretty modest lifestyle now, but I was luckily able to travel to Jamaica pretty regularly as a kid. And so I learned how to travel actually by myself. I, I was flying on planes by myself by the time I was five. Wow. Um, yeah. So <laughs> they um they were not they were not shy about uh, putting me on planes and so um and so I've I've always been kind of very adventurous very brave etc. Uh, when I was um six when I was fifteen I actually no I believe I was sixteen I left Miami to go to New Mexico to attend a boarding school called United World College. And I got to go to school with kids from around the world for wow. two years. And so that experience really opened my eyes to the world that we live in. Uh, there was, I believe, over 80 countries represented at that school. Um, these are kids that come directly from those countries to New Mexico to, to attend the program. And so, you know, everyone spoke different languages, had different religious backgrounds, cultural beliefs, et cetera. Lots of clashes, lots of political, you know, turmoil, lots of debates, et cetera. But um, it was also a really beautiful kind of humanizing experience. And so that really kind of shaped the rest of my path. Um, during that school, I became very, uh, very kind of a lot more hyper aware of social justice, social problems. Uh, around the world. When I went to college in California, I went to Pomona College in Los Angeles. I started studying economics and I also started taking classes on black studies. And I started to realize that there was this really interesting, um, this really interesting kind of story and narrative and history behind the uh, experiences that I was having as a black 
girl growing up in the world. And I was able to put a lot of um, context behind my own personal experiences, which was really empowering. It was also really frustrating as well. And I also, in that time, went on a spiritual journey as well. I read this book called Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh. And I became, um, I started meditating and I started really kind of digging into myself and finding a sense of purpose and realized that I wanted to help, uh, help people improve their lives. And I wanted to specifically focus on justice and opportunity and making sure that people had fair opportunity to control their lives and live the lives that they want to live and dream and prosper. And so after college, I um, moved back down to Miami and I ended up, um, I ended up getting like this job in finance that, you know, wasn't really something I was passionate about. It was just something to do. And I also started organizing. I became a community organizer. And um, throughout that time as a community organizer, I, you know, we could, we could maybe get into this a, a little further on in the discussion, but essentially I, I ended up deciding that I was going to pivot into tech. And that's a cool story that, that we should talk about. So I decided to pivot into tech. I go to a coding boot camp in California. I become a software engineer. I get my first job at MailChimp as a junior engineer. They did a great job of training and developing me, but I also had all of these like leadership skills as well that I brought to the table. So I, after a couple of years, ended up switching into management, became an engineering manager. And while I was doing that, I launched my company in the Daima. Um, and yeah, that's how I got here. My company has gone through a number of different pivots. Um, you know, when I first launched, I was working full time. Now, two years later, I'm a full time founder. I completely work for myself. And, uh, you know, we've gone through a number of iterations, but right now we are focused on helping to close the digital divide. And that means increasing the adoption of technology throughout the world. Um, of course, we're starting out with a main focus on the United States, but want to expand and, you know, technology has a direct correlation with economic opportunity, economic impact, um, economic development. And when you look at different communities um, in the United States and around the world, technology um, is oftentimes missing in, in the most disadvantaged communities. And so we want to help people uh, get access to tech and also learn how to use tech that might be sitting right under their noses that they don't know how to use. Wow. Wow. Um, uh, the the official mission statement of Umba Daima, again, it's umbadaima.com. Just wanted to, to say that. Uh, I know I, I took something out of it, closing the digital divide. You know, it's funny what you want to do. I said to you before I we went on air, I quoted Charles Dickens, who wrote A Christmas Carol in the 18 mid 1800s and his issue back then there are two things that are going to affect humanity uh, ignorance and, and want and you're dealing uh and so not not much has changed in 150 years literally the the institution uh it's not an institution of ignorance uh and, and you want to do this which is such a and that's the thing that really fascinated me when i saw what what you're doing and and I and I've been to the website a few times and, and watched some of the videos. Um so officially your mission is there a, a, like a mission statement um for Umba Daima? Our um yeah so our mission is to make technology accessible and available to all uh which also ties into closing the digital divide very you know very similar and you know we um we also want to tackle diversity in tech. But I think a lot of people look at the diversity in tech um, issue as a um, as a racism issue, which it which that is a component of it, but it's a it's less of a, an explicit racism issue and more of a systemic uh, racism, systemic oppression issue. A lot of the issue behind the lack of diversity in tech is the fact that, you have, you know, Black women, Latino people that are not growing up 
using technology. They're not growing up exposed to technology. And I don't just mean going on your phone and using Instagram, right? I mean, building websites, building apps, building, um, building uh, uh, scripts, right? Um, even, you know, being able to work with a radio or a physical device and deconstruct it and put it back together, right? Mm -hmm. and these are things that in in many um, white and wealthy communities, kids are getting exposed to this at a very young age. So it's very natural for them to transition from just consuming tech to creating tech, right? Whereas in a lot of black and brown communities, we're consuming tech, but we're not even thinking, well, how is this made, right? This app that I use every single day, how is this built? And so um, I think there, there just needs to be a lot more kind of exposure across the board to technology beyond, um, uh, and I think a part of that come is, is consumption. And a part of that is also teaching people how to be able to use tech to build other tech, right? Um, and, and starting at all ages. Um, it's great to teach kids, but you can also teach adults. And I think that's another thing that, that um, that people forget as well is that there are many, there are millions, if not billions of adults around the world that are capable and ready to learn. Uh, of which I'm one. And, and I've, uh, you know, um, at my advanced age, I, I try to stay on top of all this. Uh, I've been gifted to have the resources, not a lot of resources on the social security, but uh, uh, have the resources and to push myself in, into doing these kind of uh, things. Um, it's funny. I, uh, uh, I I was interviewed by Cornell University uh, um, recently, a couple actually a couple of weeks ago, uh, on how to involve senior citizens and you know and the institution of senior citizens in in, in climate. Uh, in, in climate change and getting them more involved. And, and, and what you just said resonated with me, you know, how do we get uh, uh, senior citizens involved in tech? Because there's armies and armies and armies of, of very capable senior citizens. So you, your, 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 your work, your, your drive uh, is, is so important. Um, and, and I've recognized this, you know, twenty years ago, and what you're, what you're, what you're doing, it's like what I think it's a wow, and how how important it is. Um, if people join uh, Umba Daima uh, in the network, what are some of the things they can learn and 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 get from this? By the way, uh, some of the videos I, you know, I I watched. Uh, it's great. It's really, it's a great. It's a great website, and and there's some really some really great uh we'll talk about some of the stuff i saw um uh so what are they what are people going to get access to when they go to umba daima yeah so umba daima operates now as a venture studio and so we as a venture studio for those who, who aren't familiar a venture studio is a company that is building out multiple products or services um, under one brand and those products and services will uh, hopefully eventually become their own individual companies, right? So it's a company that's building out multiple companies. Um, and it also operates as like an innovation arm because there has to be a lot of testing and there might be some companies that fail, some companies that succeed, right? Um, so, so that's how we operate. And before we got to this point, we had been building a community of people that were really passionate about emerging tech and uh, particularly Web3, NFTs and crypto. And we built that community through a lot of events. Over two years, we've done uh, 270 events. 240 of those were online. The wow. remaining 30 plus were done in real life in six different cities. And so we were able to do a lot of educational programming, um, which is a huge part of of, of growing, you know, growing people's skill sets, but we also did um, social programming as well, because people 
it's hard for people to learn on their own. So they need to learn in groups and they, they do better when there's a social component and when they can learn from their peers. And so we did a lot of meetups. We did a lot of Twitter spaces events, mostly online events. And uh, we built this, this beautiful community. And in the process of doing all of that, we were able to figure out what the two products are that we want to build. So now our, our goal is really to funnel our existing audience, which is uh, over 6,000 people, um, to funnel that, that, and when I say 6,000, I mean, we have 6,000 people on our email list. We have over 50,000 people across social media that follow our pages. And so we, our goal is to really funnel those people into these two new products that we're launching. And so if you join the network, if you join our, um, if you join our email list, you'll be able to get updates about these two new products. And, you know, I, you know, if, if, if you're ready, I can jump into what those two, two is products that, are. Is that uh, under the, the banner of what you're incubating? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm, I'm, by the way, I, just so you know, I'm taking notes even while you're, no, I'm taking notes right here. I'm sitting with my <laughs> pen and taking notes. Even though I'm I'm interviewing you, I'm still taking up. All right, so what? Um, this is I mean, this is great stuff that you've got this this network. Uh, um, so what are some of the products that you're uh, incubating? Yes. So the first one um, that we started was called Black NFT Art, and you know this one we've really we're we're tabling um for now but it was a really great start and it was just a free promotion tool for black creators um to be able to grow their brand on social media and, and get visibility for their nfts um we very quickly realized that we wanted to focus on more than black folks we wanted to focus on more than creators and we wanted to focus on more than nfts so we've pivoted away from that but it's still a project that's near and dear to us because it did really black and FTR is what kind of propelled us forward. And we got a lot of um, international press coverage. We got a lot of sponsorships and partnerships with amazing brands from Christie's to um, Red Bull to, wow. Wow. you know, because of that. So, you know, that is near and dear to my heart, but I've always had, um, I've always had a passion for impact that affects many different types of people. And so we've been trying to figure out how we can, how we could expand. So the next project we're launching is called Tech Misfits. And Tech Misfits is a new community for STEAM professionals and learners. Can you spell that for me? I'm I'm, I'm gonna write this down. So STEAM stands is stands for No te Tech Misfit? Oh, Tech Misfits. C T E C H. M I S F I T S Tech Misfit. Oh, Tech Misfit. Okay, I got it. And um, and then Steam stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math. So we are building a, a community for Steam professionals and learners and enthusiasts who are passionate about increasing adoption, technology adoption around the world. Um, especially emerging tech. Emerging tech is things like the metaverse, NFTs, AI, crypto, the internet of things. In some places, emerging tech is just software, SaaS software, right? In other places, it might be a bit more advanced. And so, um, you know, there's, we've, we've found a lot of people um, on my path that are passionate about this, but it's really hard for to 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 collaborate when there's no place for us to all collaborate and um, so for us to all gather and stay in touch and so essentially it's a community that is going to be hosted on an app that we're building it's a mobile app um, it's a tech misfits app and you'll be able to download it on your phone and it functions as a mixture between LinkedIn and Reddit and so right. you'll be able to create a wow. professional profile, um, but you'll also be able to join forums and create your own forums. And these are discussion-based forums. They can be around anything from a topic to a business, to an initiative, to a question. Um, and so the goal of these forums is to really help to organize people around shared interests and shared missions and initiatives 
And then over time, we'll be building in additional collaboration features. So I envision a world where, you know, let's say there's a, let's say there's a bunch of people that are working on addressing uh, uh, technology adoption in, I don't know, the Caribbean, for example, um, they would be able to use this app to not only find each other, but also set up communication systems, set up collaboration systems, and actually cross collaborate, um, as opposed to them all working in silos, they're, they're stronger together, right? And then, let's say there's people organizing in, you know, in South America, and then Central America, and then parts of Africa, right, we can have all of these groups that are organizing on a smaller level, and then organizing on a larger level across regions as well. So that's what we want to build towards. And this is partially inspired by my personal experience as a community organizer. One of the things that we really struggled with was organizing, <laughs> which is the funniest thing because, you know, it's called community organizer. Um, but when it came to actually collaborating, it was a huge struggle. Um, and one of the things that we didn't have was the right technology to facilitate that collaboration. And so I actually st started getting very frustrated and was trying to find different software and apps that we could use to, to, to improve our organization, effectiveness, efficiency, et cetera, and couldn't find all. Some of the things we found were great. And then there were these gaps and things that I couldn't find. And so I said, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to learn how to build tech because I can see the solution and it doesn't exist. So anyways, Tech Misfits is, again, this community of um, STEAM professionals, learners, enthusiasts that are collaborating on closing the digital divide. They will live on this app called Tech Misfits. It's a, essentially a social media or social networking app. And then the app is NFT gated. So in order to access it, you have to have one of the Tech Misfits avatars. And this is a really beautiful collection of, we're gonna release somewhere around 15,000 avatars. And these avatars will all be completely unique. Every single one will be completely unique. Um, there's different body sizes, different skin tones, different genders, different facial features, wow. right? Your typical avatar project is one face. It's one type of nose, one type of lip, one type of eye, right? And then they might change the shade of the skin tones and the hair, and, but that's it, right? Um, so very limited representation. Um, we're going to bust the the avatar space wide open. 15,000. Wow. Yes, it, it, it's going to be a lot of avatars and they will be extremely diverse. So everyone looks very different. All sorts of noses, lips, eyes. I mean, we have people that are older, younger, bigger, thinner, um, you name it. And it, it be, it's such a complex collection that it's actually taken us over a year to dis to do all of the artwork. Wow. Um, so this these avatars will be uh, essentially the key to unlock access to the community and to the app. Once you have an avatar, you can have as many avatars as you want. Um, you can access the app, but you can also use the avatar to, um, you'll also have commercial rights to your avatar, which means you can make your own merchandise using the art, you can create your own brand using the art. Um, you can create your own derivative artwork, right? You can you can license the artwork to others um, for a profit. So the idea is that this community also has this shared um, intellectual property that we are all um, building on top of. And you know, hopefully, there's also a, a financial and monetary benefit to that because we're all collaborating together. Wow, uh, it is a wow. So it's a little bit over my head trying to, to you know, to absorb. Well, uh, um, it, it's a wow. I I I need to go and, and sign up for your emails and, and go to Umba Daima and get. Uh, and all this is going to be there, and it'll be forthcoming, and so mm -hmm. I can take my time and absorb all this because this is this is great stuff. Thank really. you. No, no. Thank you. 
And if, if you join the Tech Misfits um, email list, uh, which you do that by going to the Tech Misfits, wait, uh, Tech Misfits website, which is techmisfitsapp.com and join the wait list. When you join the wait list, you'll get a series of emails that breaks everything down in bite-sized pieces of information. Oh, yeah. um, we explain, you know, the vision. We explain how the community will work. We also explain what NFTs are, what blockchain is, how you, how you purchase and trade the avatars, et cetera. Um, so yeah, that's that's Tech Misfits. When we're done and we close this interview, you'll talk a little bit about, I have some ideas that can help you spread the word. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, interestingly, uh, uh, we're going to, uh, before we jump in, I just want to um, go off topic for a second. I, I kind of forewarned you I was going to do this. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and I love asking this question. And actually, you don't have to answer it if you choose not to answer it. But it's a nice question, I think. And here goes. Uh, completely off topic, Iris. Uh, excluding family or friends, somebody living or dead you'd like to spend a day with. Excluding family or friends, someone living or dead that I would want to spend the day with. And it could be one or two or three, whatever. There's no rules. As in, when you say excluding living or dead, that means that they don't, they could be, they could uh, be dead. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, wow. It is a wow. <laughs> it is a wow. The, the fact that they could be dead really kind of opens up all the possibilities. Um. I wow, this is so hard. I'm I'm sorry. Um, spend the day with. I mean, so off the first person that always comes to mind with these kinds of questions is Beyonce, but that's usually in the context of like who do you admire or love. Okay. And I really that's as a creator, businesswoman. But I feel like spending the day with her would be a little awkward because okay. I'm such a big fan. I think it would be weird. Um, like I'd probably cry and like, you know what I mean? It would just be a mess. So that's why I'm like spending the day. I don't know. Um, I think someone very, you know, I, I think maybe someone like Deepak Chopra. Um uh maybe even um uh jay dr silva who created the silva method um uh even someone like jesus christ for example if jesus christ existed you know i i i someone someone who has had like a huge impact on people spiritually um to be able to just ask question perfect answer perfect I mean, it's perfect no matter whatever you answer is perfect. Uh, thank you for that. Um, okay, moving along, uh, back back to work. Um, you you know, uh, we you you mentioned NFTs a whole bunch, uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, for people out there, there must be armies of people who don't really know what an NFT is. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I I, I do. Um, it's still a little vague and out in, in the universe. But um, so th this question, uh, we're talking about NFTs, cryptocurrencies, which has been in the headlines with that guy uh, who absconded with the funds uh, from his, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, uh, but, um, and I know you talked about this in one of your videos. Mm -hmm. See, I did my homework. I keep telling you I did my homework, Iris. So, uh, will NFTs uh, make you a millionaire? <laughs> if you can compact that, I know you did a whole uh, video. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. So the answer is most likely not. Um, but you know, the the important thing is for people to understand how what the technology is, so that they can be prepared for the future. 
And so that if the opportunity is there, they can leverage it and maybe become a, a millionaire by leveraging it. You know, I think it's similar to the internet, right? Like when the internet first came out, a lot of people didn't really understand what it was for or how to use it. And the folks that kind of waited the longest to kind of get on board um, in some cases went out of business, right? Because their competitors figured out how to use it to advance far beyond them. And so I would say, just look at, um, just look at NFTs as a technology. It's a new tool. And essentially the way that NFTs work is it allows you to store data and it allows you to, to store data in a, in a way that is very highly traceable and trackable across the internet. And you can't manipulate it, you can't change it, you can't destroy it. And so, um, and so what people have been using NFTs for is uh, as certificates of ownership. They've been using NFTs to indicate who owns something and who owns something primarily in the digital realm. So if I create a piece of digital art, maybe I create a you know, digital animation or I um, take pictures and I have a digital file of my picture, right? Or maybe I write song lyrics um, on you know, a, a digital document, right? How, how do we indicate who owns that thing? And so NFTs are being used to indicate ownership. And then now the thing about ownership is that ownership essentially it, it, it functions as something you can buy and sell, right? Just like you buy and sell ownership of a house uh, or a car. And so these NFTs are being used to indicate ownership of various digital assets. And then, um, and then people will trade them across the internet. Thanks. You know, in the case of Tech Misfits, for example, we're using NFTs to indicate who owns which avatar, right? So that when someone goes and decides to use the avatar um, on a high effort, you know, to create artwork or merchandise or whatever, it's clear that they have, they own that, that, that artwork and they have the right to do that. Now I'm, I'm, I'm moved to get myself an avatar when the time comes out, um, which I'll do. Yes. Yes, I'll do that. Um, slightly off topic, favorite movies. I always like to throw that in. Um, my favorite movie of all time is definitely The Matrix. Um, probably, I mean, I love all three of them, to be completely honest. It's really hard for me to pick. But, you know, the, the first two are definitely, you know, definitely, I, I'd say, my favorite over the third. Um, and then I, I'd say after The Matrix, I really love Lord of the Rings. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Um, in my studying up on you, mm -hmm. I read something that really fascinated me. You, you know, you had your teaching career. Um, and th this just, again, blew me away. You, you helped a student with a disability uh, in, in first grade go from first grade reading to third grade reading in five months, which is like a wow. So talk a little bit about your teaching career uh, and, and the rewards you got out of that. Yes, yes. Teaching has, teaching was, and I think has been my favorite job that I've ever had. You know, being a founder is amazing, but there's something really special about teaching and teaching kids. Um, I, and I was really good at it. And I think, you know, I, I was very intuitive and I was very, um, I was very naturally skilled at teaching. Uh, and I think a lot of that came from the fact that I am a, I'm a, I'm a strong communicator. Uh, and I've, I've been a strong communicator for a long time. Um, but I also had a very interesting academic uh, uh, is, uh, experience. So when I, um, just, to, just to cover that quickly, just to provide the context. So 
um, you know, I was born in the U.S., but I started school in Jamaica. And in Jamaica, you start earlier than when you start here. So I started, um, I think, kindergarten when I was at, like four or something like that. And in the U.S., I think you start when you're five or six. So when we moved back to the U.S., they tried to put me back a couple grades because they said you're too young to be in the first grade, even though I'd already completed half of the first grade. My mom pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. And they said, okay, fine. If she takes a test, we'll, we'll, and she passes, we'll move her. So I took the test. I passed. I ended up getting pushed into the first grade. And I was on average a year and a half to two years older than everyone in my grade. Um, then I get to second grade and I'm like outperforming a, a lot of the kids. And so my teacher had me take a, a gifted test. I took the gifted test. I passed. And I started going to this every day. I would go for about an hour to a, a separate teacher um, with seven other kids in the whole school. And we would do art. We would, we would go on field trips. We would read. We started reading Harry Potter. I was six years old and I was wow. reading Harry Potter. Wow. Um, which was at the time, I think, for kids uh, like around 10 to 12. So I, I just, I, you know, I, I had a very unique teaching experience, uh, sorry, educational experience. I was then placed in the highly gifted in fifth grade. Um, so I had to go to a new school for that. That was a very, again, another kind of like novel teaching approach that they had there. And then I was in the gifted all the way through, um, high school. Um, so it's a small set of kids and you all have the same classes together versus, at these big schools where there's like you know I think we had almost uh, like over 3,000 kids in our high school but there's a small group of kids that are in the gifted and they're all in the same classes together from elementary up then I went to UWC right the the school in New Mexico right um, the international program that was a, a very interesting educational experience as well then I went to Pomona College, which was a liberal arts school. So I got the kind of interesting liberal arts experience. So granted, I was very kind of aware by the time I became a teacher of many different teaching styles that your average person is probably not exposed to. And so um, that lent itself to just naturally, I, when I started teaching, I hit the ground running and I very quickly became an and an amazing teacher and the kids knew it right yeah. Yeah. um and so i have so many amazing teaching stories at my i i taught at this uh this muslim um private school and uh i i taught ap us history for the first time ever i took the class halfway through the year and they were really behind because the previous teacher that they had wasn't a great teacher and they they, they kept complaining that they never learned anything. So I had a half a semester, sorry, I had a semester to teach two semesters of material and prepare them for the test. My students were the first students in school history to pass that test. And one of them got a five. We had three students that passed and one of them got a five. Wow. Um, and so, and I actually used technology in a lot of ways to help them do that. So my second job I taught at a, at a middle school um, taught middle school, uh, eighth grade U.S. history. And this was a completely different school where a lot of the kids were living in um, difficult homes. A lot of them were um, living either at or below the poverty line. Um, and a lot of them had learning disabilities. And I didn't actually fully realize that they had learning disabilities until a couple weeks in, maybe even a couple months, and I, I couldn't understand why they were taking so long to complete their homework assignments. And they're even not, not just their homework assignments, but their classroom assignments. I would give an assignment and they'd have more than enough time to complete what I thought was the most simple mm -hmm. assignment. And they couldn't, they wouldn't complete it. And so one day I said, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna do this assignment together the whole class, all together. I, and just, I gotta stop you for one second. We're getting a thunderstorm here. Okay. All things. So we're gonna finish uh, and I'm gonna, um, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, 
I don't want the lightning and the power to go off, then this all gets lost. So okay. f- finish your thing. Uh, I just heard thunder. It's so crazy. Okay. Okay. Um. So, uh. So I I decided we were all going to do the assignment together. These these were like reading, read the history book, and answer some questions. So I had everyone take turns reading the hit the the history book out loud to the whole class. And one by one, I'm going through each kid and I'm realizing that the majority of the kids in my class don't know how to read. And these are 14, they're 13 and 14 kids. And they were struggling to read very basic sentences. And so that was of course a huge eye-opening experience for me. and uh, and so, long story short, one of the kids that was in that class was reading at you know a second grade level. Um, I started implementing all these different strategies to help with reading, even though I'm not a reading teacher, I'm teaching history, um, and uh, was able through those strategies to help him um, advance a, a couple levels in just a couple months. Wow! Wow! All of this, all that you've done, the, the teaching, the the engineering, the software engineering, all of this, and, and now what you're doing with Umba Daima, uh, this is great stuff, Iris. Uh, not to cut it short, because maybe you'll come back. Uh, uh, I would love you to come back in any shape, way, or form. Maybe when... Uh, uh, the tech misfits comes out we can do a whole little thing on that that's, to be continued that's what i'm 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 cutting it short because I, I i don't want uh i can't believe we're getting a thunderstorm in new jersey in the middle of january it, it, it is um that's a whole nother subject it's crazy so uh i'm i'm i'm, I'm thanking you so much for your your passion your time uh for being here um this has been great truly thank you thank you yeah i'm happy to come back anytime and continue we'll we'll absolutely talk about that i'm going to stop recording uh just i'm going to stop recording. don't leave yet um uh i i I can't believe we're getting a thunderstorm it's crazy but thank you so much happy new year and to be continued